Okay, good morning and welcome to Math 8's Graphing Systems Quiz Review today. Um, feel free to pause the video if, you, if I go too fast and you need to write some of this stuff down. Okay, so the first two things we need to talk about. Um, number one, how do you tell on a graph whether a system has one solution, no solution, or infinitely many solutions um, are below. So a system has one solution if the graph intersects, if it crosses. Um, it has no solution when the lines are parallel, that means they will never cross. And it has infinite solutions if you graph one line and then you graph the second line and it lands exactly on the first. Um, how do you tell from two equations whether a system has one, no, or infinitely many solutions? It will have one solution if the slopes are different. Um, right away it has one solution. The y-intercepts then can be the same or they can be different. It really doesn't matter. It will have no solution if they have the same slope but different y-intercepts. And it will have infinite solutions if you come out with the same slope and the same y-intercept. Okay, so again, if you need to pause the video to get those notes, please do so now. All right, moving on to number three. Um, these are just some examples of actually doing these out. So how many solutions does each system have? Okay, let's start with part A. So in order to figure this out, we really are gonna use the notes from above because this is asking you about equations and here are the two equations. So what we want to do is we wanna start by identifying M and B, M being our slope, and B being our y-intercept for our first graph. So this is for the first one. So M, remember, if this is in y equals M, the slope is next to the x, so that's negative 3. And the y-intercept in this case is 2. Okay, let's do it again for the second one. Um, so this one again is in y equals as well. So we can go M and B again. This M is the same, it's also negative 3 but the b, the y-intercept, is negative 7. So if you look at our notes from above, we can see that our slopes are indeed the same, same slopes, but our y-intercepts here are different. We have a 2 and a negative 7, and so the one that has the same slope and different y-intercepts is no solution. So this is going to have no solution if we were to graph it. Okay, meaning that that would make parallel lines as well. Let's try again, and then I will leave the last one for you to try. Um, so let's look at part B. Part B, again, the first one is in Y equals, so we can start right away by identifying M and B. So I'm going to do that down here and leave a little space because I can see that this one's going to need some work. So M is 2, B is 6. I know that because the 2 is next to the x and the 6 is by itself. Um, the second one though is not in y equals format, so you have to start by getting it in y equals. Remember, to do that, this y is going to stay right there. It's claiming the left side of the equation, so we need to move everything else to the right side of the equal sign. So 12 is already there. Um, I'm going to begin by removing the negative 4x. So the opposite of negative 4x is to add 4x, add 4x over here. And then I also have to get rid of this 2 since it's right next to the y. That means it's timesing. So to uh, undo that, I will divide by 2, divide this by 2, and divide this by 2. Now there's not a lot of space here, so I'm going to rewrite the second equation up above. Um, so to rewrite it, I end up with y equals 12 divided by 2 is 6. And positive 4x divided by 2 is positive 2x. Now it's in y equals format, and I can go ahead and identify m and b. So m, the number next to the x, is 2. And b, the number that is alone, is 6. And so we can see now that it's right underneath each other that we ended up with the same slope here, and the same y-intercept. So that means that according to our notes above, same slope, same y-intercept, this is going to have infinite solutions here. 
All right, and so you can use that sideways eight as a symbol, um, or you can write that out. All right, I'm gonna leave part C for you to try on your own, and then I will do number four with you. Actually, no, we'll skip number four. So this is nicely in Y equals format. You're gonna wanna graph the system and solve it. So you can come back to that one to get you started on one of the harder ones. I'm gonna turn you to the back and I will start you, I'll do number five with you and then I'll leave you to do four and six and get ready for that quiz that we're gonna to take tomorrow. Okay, so number five, the reason I'm choosing to do this one is there are a few more steps, but it will help you do the other ones. All right, so it says solve the system by graphing. So first things first, um, let's look at, take a look at the top equation. That one's already in y equals, so I can identify m and b. So m and b, on the top equation, my m is negative 2 and my b is 3. Since I'm graphing this, though, I want my slope to have a rise and a run, so I'm going to make that negative 2 over 1. Okay, where am I going to start my first graph? I always start, remember, at B. So this is where I'm gonna start. So I'm gonna go on my Y axis here and I'm gonna go to positive three and I'm gonna make a dot there. Okay, and then I'm gonna use my slope to tell me where to go from there. So since this is negative, this means I'm gonna go down two and right one. So I'm gonna go from that spot down one, two, and I'm gonna go right one, I'm gonna make a second dot. Now, if you want to be completely accurate, you can continue that pattern to make more dots. So from there, go down to right one, make another dot, down to right one, down to right one, and then your graph will be way more accurate than just using your ruler, which you can use. But now we're going to use the ruler and go through those points that we made. And there is our first graph line. That one's done. Okay, now we're gonna do this again, but we're gonna do it with the second graph. Okay, this one is not in y equals. So just like we did on the examples from the front, we're gonna get that in y equals. So y is claiming the left side of the equation, which means everything else needs to move to the right side. 15's already there. Let's start with getting the 6x out. So opposite of 6x is minus 6x. Do that to both sides. And then opposite of 3y, remember that is multiplying by 3, so we want to divide by 3 and divide each of these by 3. Now we're going to rewrite the equation. y equals 15 divided by 3 is 5. Negative 6x divided by 3 would be negative 2x. Now we can use that equation to identify m and b. So... Again, m is the one next to x, so that's going to be negative 2. And b is the one without the x, so that would be 5. We want that m to be a rise and a run, so we're going to put a 1 underneath. Okay, now we can graph. We will again start with our b, okay? So we're going to start at positive 5 this time. So on the y-axis, up to positive 5, we want to make a dot. And then we're going to use our slope for our rise and our run. So negative 2 means down 2, and positive 1 means right 1. So down 2, right 1. And again, if you follow that pattern down 2, right 1, down 2, right 1, all the way down, it will make your graph much more accurate. Take your ruler and go through all of your dots. Make your line. Okay, so there is the system. Now, the answer, the solution to the system is where they cross. But as you can see, these turn out parallel, which we saw before. It has the same slope, so those ones are going to be parallel. So the solution to this system is actually no solution. If they did cross, remember the solution to the system would be the ordered pair that they cross at. Okay, hopefully you find this helpful. I'm, again, I've left number six, uh, number four, and part C of number three for you to complete. 
And this is going to be all the things that will be on our final quiz for tomorrow. Okay, hope you have a great day. If you have any questions, feel free to email me.